Welcome to Adults Only Comedy Berlin. Today we have Hans Talhammer again. Yay. Yay. Hi. Great to be here. What an honor. I'm so happy. I'm, I'm a so recurring happy. guest on the show. You are now. Yeah. yeah. I'm 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 like Louis CK on Letterman or Exactly. You are Louis CK. And you are Letterman. And I am Letterman. Yeah. We're mm -hmm. both old men who are yeah. not on TV. We're not uh, that are not on TV anymore. <laughs> Well, we're not on TV. No, we're not on TV. Is Letterman still on TV? I think he has the Netflix show. Oh, yeah. But I've been on TV recently. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What a fabricated segue. No, I, I did a roast battle. Yeah, you did. Um, post lockdown. Well, not post lock. It's still semi lockdown. Yeah. But it was this year. That was against my housemate. That was against, against Alex. Your, yes, yes. Against Ubertov. Right, yeah, he, he's, right. He's spoken about the, the roast yeah. a little bit. Oh. I love your jokes. And, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, because you, now you know him and you know that mm -hmm. every single one is a zinger. I, yeah, and yeah. just like extremely truthful. Uh, my favorite joke was the, the when you visit Alex. Yeah, because yeah. it's a... Vi uh, well, what <laughs> listeners have to know is that <laughs> Alex does not specifically specifically care about um, h hygiene in the <laughs> living space. How do you say it? He's a That's, dirty motherfucker. Yeah. And, and I had a joke about like, well, you don't know if you're at his place, at Alex's place, mm -hmm. or at Alex. The, yeah. The, you, oh, when you said like, by, like, I'm Alex or by Alex, yeah. I'm Alex, did you mean like Alexander? Yes, Plus? yes. Ah, because yeah. I wasn't sure if you meant like you're on Alex or you're oh. at Alex's. <laughs> oh, that's... Like everything of his is well, like... being on Alex is also Alex. very dirty <laughs> in my mind. Okay. Yeah. I was really just thinking like his house is just this sort of... Uh, my house. Uh, for the next three weeks, I got an apartment. Oh, you got an apartment. I got an apartment. Oh, well, let's celebrate. Yes, yes let's well, celebrate. That's, wow. Yeah. Having an, finding an apartment in this time and area and my own apartment oh with an unlimited lease no it is state housing so the quality it doesn't look like what everyone imagines living in berlin looks like you know it's not like one of those old buildings with the high ceilings and like the yeah. big doors and the wooden floorboards it's like it's well, social those, housing yeah but it's mine and i've yeah. got a balcony that doesn't look out to the street or to um a, like a courtyard wow, it's great. out to a park no way yes way wow yeah. that's way better than a high ceiling who is four meters tall anyway exactly, exactly. I, don't need, I don't need a high roof i don't need all that my... space to make me colder yeah right yeah yeah so i got nice. yeah yeah but alex yeah alex the way that alex lives like i am very grateful for living with alex yeah and he saved yeah. me and it's been lovely living with alex and it's a nice i like the area it's yeah, the a area bit rough great. but i love it yeah like there are police like blockades mm -hmm. you know every week yeah somewhere <laughs> <laughs> around yeah. in our sort of block radius but uh but i really yeah but alex definitely i don't think he's ever um put pressure into you know have heard the term elbow grease Like, no. Okay, elbow grease is when you like you put some effort into scrubbing something. All like right. you actually put pressure yeah. when you clean something. I don't uh, think he's ever to scrape something off to Yeah, but yeah. to like really like get in there with your like arm yeah. muscles and scrub. It's like yeah. putting some elbow grease. Yeah. I don't think Alex has ever <laughs> put in any elbow grease to anything. Well, have you? <laughs> have you now at the Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have. Now the problem is in English a scrubber is also like another word for um, like a slut. A scrubber. That's But I'm a good you scrubber. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the verb sense, I, dude, like I got into that shower. It's never been like the, the levels of calc that are on those tiles was just driving me crazy. So I ended up because I was like, I'm not going to invest deeply in cleaning every surface in this house. Yeah. But I need to feel like if I accidentally touch something, <laughs> I'm not disgusted by it. You know what I mean? Like I need to feel like I can I can touch things and, you know, I love that you were like in a uh, what is the word archaeologist that you can <laughs> scrape off a layer and then maybe a painting from michelangelo appears yeah seriously yeah seriously like uh 
Yeah, I've cleaned things that have never been... I, I don't know about the previous housemates, but I've, I've also got a sneaking suspicion that Alex... <laughs> <laughs> that Alex gets housemates that are typically females. Yes. <laughs> or he gets a girlfriend when his apartment gets to the point of uh, where he's like, ooh, I can't really ooh, bring anyone over here. That's a weird... A weird tactic, a weird plan. It is, but I wonder, like... I feel like the place has been cleaned before, but it's been a very long time. <laughs> a very long time. I mean, let's just make this clear for our <laughs> listeners. He's not a messy. There's no unplanned animals no, in the house. No, no. It's just that I think the both of us, uh, we have very high standards when it comes to um, cleaning. Yes. I clean my apartment weekly. Yeah. Every Saturday at 10. Oh, you are, you're different to me. Uh, we're different in that. We're, that's very, that's cool. You live alone and you still do it every Saturday at Every 10. Saturday at 10. That's beautiful. Yeah. I, maybe I'll start doing that. I'm much more of a, like, uh, ooh, needs a vacuum. Uh, vacuum. And like, maybe that'll be, you know, once a week if it's been like a dirty week or it'll be once every two weeks. But then like cl deep cleaning, like deep cleaning the, the shower, you know, I will do that not every week. No, every Saturday you at do ten. It every Saturday at ten. And I, I don't have I don't have a vacuum. What? I have no oh, it's only a one room apartment. Yeah, okay. And I think um brooming it, is that what you call it? Sweeping. Sweeping. Okay, sorry. Yeah. No, Thank don't be you. don't be sorry. Um and then Fun side note, sweep in Italian means to fuck. Okay, I go. I don't do that every week you don't on, <laughs> on Saturday. I wish, I wish you that should, you cleaning should schedule some masturbation at like nine yeah. forty-five and then yeah. clean. and then clean. Yeah, no, no, uh, no, not before cleaning. Why I think not? it's more of a reward afterwards. Ooh, okay, if it's like noon, it's like two three hours later. But like I always prefer to masturbate before I have a shower, not after. I oh, it depends actually. Or in isn't it better? No, no. water doesn't help. Okay. Water works as an anti-moisturizer. No, but, but isn't the shower, um, the, like the sound and the not being able to distract yourself with anything else, like the environment, isn't that helping to get the fantasy going? Because a lot of people speak in the shower. I'll sing, I guess. You sing? I sing in the shower. Mm -hmm. But masturbation doesn't... Like, I've tried it, and I'm just like, this is just... I'm fighting against a natural element that I have introduced to my, the water, you know? Like, it's just, water doesn't help me. I can't, like, I won't be able to, it's very hard to come. I th um, I've gotten to an age where I think about the bill. Like, <laughs> oh, this is getting expensive. I need to finish. <laughs> this is, this cost me already 53 cents. <laughs> I need to be faster. And may, I don't think that's helping my sex, sexual skills. No. I'm bad to... But you're not interested in helping your sexual skills. We've established that. We've established that. Well, you... Well, last time I've been here, mm -hmm. I said I've never tried to be good and yeah, that's in sex. bed. Mm -hmm. And I did not mean, like, <laughs> I don't care about <laughs> anything. <laughs> but it's not that I work on mm. the skills. Because, 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 mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. You don't know what what means? What, what does it mean to be good? And why, mm. and why would I want to be good? Why would I want to be good? You laugh, please explain. Okay, so obviously all of these sentences can be like so deeply uh, interpreted on, on different levels. So mm. basically, I can understand like what I think you're trying to communicate, which I have missed, like I have flipped and like twisted to mean mm -hmm. something else is I think you mean uh, I am not putting effort in to uh, develop skills that I think would be um, enjoyed by anybody that I have sex with and that I will have sex in this this way that you know uh, organically develops with the person I'm with I think mm -hmm. that's what you mean I think that's what like that's the nicest version I want of what her you, yeah uh, and it's always just one person yeah <laughs> And it's always a her. Yeah. Um, I want her to be happy. That's, and that's, okay. So when I first interpreted, misinterpreted it for you for the benefit of like my amusement, uh, it's, it sounded like you, <laughs> you don't care and you're just going to do what you want to do to get off. And that's that. And it is what it is. Well, that's and you rape. Won't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't do that. 
and that you won't put any effort just into getting... Just for the getting, record, getting, I don't do that. No. Just can we... You are so not a rapey guy okay. like, at all. I haven't seen two drink hunts. I'm still curious to see two drink, two drink hunts. There is a maximum two drink hunts because I can't drink more. Not suggesting that two drink hunts is a rapist. But no. <laughs> no, two drink hunts is a very... M well, not m sad, but melancholy <laughs> and... Like, you're all great. This oh, yeah? Is, yeah. Alex suggested that Two Drink Hans was more of like a deep Bavarian, uh, like slightly well, hidden anti-Semitism or, or like... Hidden? Uh, no, it's <laughs> very obvious that I hate the... No, it's... No, I lose the ability to speak standard German because uh -oh. for the first 25 years I have not spoken standard German. Uh-huh. I, I grew up in a very small town mm -hmm. with a very thick accent. Oh. And it's, it, it cost me a lot of effort and brain power to speak standard German. Uh -huh. And so I lose the skill because my brain gets fucked. Maybe we should both, like we can do, I'm back to sobriety, but maybe like at some point for, you know, um, like just the experiment of it. Because I think when I drink, I do become more Australian. 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 I think Australian. Yeah, I think I become more more Aussie. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I'm not sure about two drinks, though. I think it probably, like, my tolerance is, even after I stopped, like, drinking for a year, my tolerance is still pretty good. Like, I can still knock back two liters of beer yeah. and be, like, very coherent. Okay, but do you mean more Australian as in just what your pronunciation, pronunciation is? Pronunciation and even, like, as, words, you know? I okay. think I'd start throwing out. But there's no Australian behavior where you... Uh, yeah, sure. Kill Aborigines, or I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know what is typically Australian. Yeah, I just hate on natives yeah, and resent yeah, any migrants. Yeah. And uh, anyone that's not white, I'm sorry. Mm. Like, we can't talk. No. And Jews. And We've Jew established no, the Jews that. are fine. And Australia like has a, actually a very strong um, Jewish population. Like, anti-Semitism doesn't really come into the conversation. It's like anti Asian. Oh, yeah. And oh, it's yeah. anti any color because there was the white Australia policy yeah. in Australia yeah. up until like the set, like late 70s, I'm pretty yeah. sure, um, where, yeah, no non white migrant was allowed. <laughs> Wow, that's so weird. Dude, and like no one realizes this, but yeah. So when I, when I, <laughs> two drink Anna, <laughs> yeah. Aussie, Aussie slang, and probably just like, a, yeah, just like a looseness, you know? Just mm. like that loose. Does looseness. your real personality show up when you drink? Because I think you, tr you do your best to hide it most of the time. Yeah, definitely. I think real, per like I think um, because alcohol is a depressant, right? And so you saying that you get melancholic after two mm -hmm. drinks. I think, I think what happens with alcohol is, you know, if it's working as a, like if it's having an actual effect on you, then yeah, your insecurities come out, and then how you usually hide your insecurities is accentuated. So if that means that you um, are aggressive to people because that makes you feel stronger mm. maybe that's what you do or you and so yeah so does my real personality come i don't know like there's so many i don't know alcohol like alcohol for me is so often been paired with other things i never really feel like alcohol has, has that much of a pure effect like, okay i'm never purely haven't it just makes you dizzy um it can make me it can make me sad or it can make me slutty oh. like yeah if i'm drinking then i'll be like all right let me get you a drink. How am now, I going to have sex at the end of this? Because um, like 99% of what I know about you is like, okay, you have a grindhouse, dirty show. You do adults only. Mm -hmm. It's you always preface every show with like, oh, it's it's like mature material, blah, blah, blah. So it's yeah, it's dirty, grown up and so on. But there's, there was one conversation, a very brief conversation we had when you were sober. Yeah. And you said, well, um, I do this till I find the right guy and have kids. I do what until I find the right well, guy? Well, live like you live. How do I live, Hans? Well, you've had um, several acquaintances. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, male beings, uh huh, um, and you you um, accentuate the um, sexual side, uh huh, very much, uh huh. But there was this brief moment where you were like, 
okay, I'm going to have a family mm -hmm. and settle down mm -hmm. and have like just a monogamous uh -huh. relationship. Is that the word? Yeah. Okay. Wow, I did it. You did it. Um, a monogamous relationship, relationship, and so this side also exists. Yeah, this is yeah. also something you want. Is does that side come out or show up or be more present when you're high, drunk? My my desire to be in a monogamous relationship to to, to settle, settle down, down in a very traditional way. Sure, sure. Like I still wanna, I still want a family. Oh, it's always so weird saying that. Like, there's so many factors that, like, I have no control over. So, like, I can want a family, but, like, I also really want to be okay with not having that. Yeah. Because I'm not in control of, like, what happens. So, wanting a family, it's like, yeah, I want to be famous, but it's like, okay. But, like, that's, having a family to me is as possible as getting famous. I know you can have a family very easily. Yeah, but it needs to be with the right person. Like I need to be, I need to be in love. I need to be like there needs to be chemistry. It needs to be a relationship that's healthy and works and supports me, and I can support. Like it, there needs to be but it, but all that, of those but things. That, yeah, but that comes with time also. And then I don't even know if I'm fertile. You know, like I don't even know if I can have kids. There's also but this that, element. That, but that shouldn't stop you from. From, well, that shouldn't stop your dream. I mean, I nobody knows until they know. Exactly. exactly. So um, maybe it's it's okay to have uh, to 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 chase the dream or to have. Uh, But the thing is, you can't chase love, right? Love will come. And the thing is, at first, I need to find someone that I can have a healthy relationship with. Yes. That I feel like that all those things are there. That don't and that doesn't compromise my you know what I love, which is doing comedy. But you, but you, mm -hmm. but as soon as you want mm -hmm. the I, well, I give like advice and I don't know anything myself. But I feel like uh -huh. as soon as you are ready for something, you mm -hmm. attract people who are also ready for that. Definitely. Because if you're ready for drugs <clears throat> and you want to party, you attract people who take drugs and party all day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've never ever in my life ever attracted anyone who's into drugs mm. never ever none of my partners nobody ever took drugs interesting i've i've been in a two-year relationship we smoked a joint once wow and that was before we were in a relationship because we've known each mm. other for a couple of years and that was before that so yeah i definitely attract people who take drugs even and I, even when do. i'm sober but the thing is i was sober for a year and during that time I was still attracting people who were into drugs. Well, you've put yourself in an environment well, there is that. Th that attracts those people. Yeah. You live in a, a certain city. Yeah. You are in the artsy fartsy community. Uh, yes. And you are in, um, and that should not sound like, like I'm talking down because I'm on the same level, but yeah. we are on a level in our art. Mm -hmm where there's people who've just started mm -hmm. or who want to try it out mm -hmm. or for whom it is like um, like a hobby or a replacement for a social mm -hmm. uh, for social environment mm -hmm. so a lot of people who do those shows or mics they come to those shows twice a month and then hang out mm -hmm. and and even if they don't do the shows they just come and hang out it's like a replacement for like a uh, like um, a, a, a social life. Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah. for for friends mm -hmm. so um, they are also very often lost in life and they take drugs <laughs> and all those not all those things attract mm -hmm, mm -hmm. druggy people mm -hmm. and before i moved to berlin i've never been around people never who smoke marijuana or do cocaine never ever okay well in australia i was look i've i've taken so many drugs in my life so i think there's there's i'm open to that and i yes. and i'm and that's you know because of my experience and my openness to it but i have a very strong um approach to how i think drugs are best used and i have that opinion but i feel like the reason why i've gone back to sobriety is because having the baseline as I do not do any of these things unless it's an extremely special occasion, mm. that means that people who, and the reason why I've done this is because it means people who want to do drugs all the time are not going to want to hang out with someone who always says no. Yeah. So that's why, and that's my strategy with that. And I'm, yeah, 
so I'm interested to see what like I've only been sober again for two weeks. Mm. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, well. I've only been sober, and like it's not hard at all. Mm. But I've been sober for two weeks, and I'm interested to see who, like, what what happens to mm. my attraction mm. pull and what, yeah. what 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 happens here. Now I think I ha- I have found something. What? When I smoke a joint mm. or drink. A drink because mm-hmm. that's very special to me because mm-hmm. I consider myself to be a person who never does that mm-hmm. so every time it's special even if I drink five times a week mm-hmm. every time to me it's special because I consider myself a person who's who's not drinking mm-hmm. or not smoking a cigarette mm-hmm. so every time I do it it's wow I'm now this person mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. consider yourself to be a person who's who's into sobriety now Mm -hmm. so you are in your head you are a a drug taking person Mm -hmm. in whose life it is normal to take drugs Mm -hmm. and has been normal or has been normal or or, and 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 every time you don't do drugs or Mm -hmm. don't smoke or don't Mm -hmm. drink it's special but after a year of pure sobriety i don't i actually feel like this is the normal thing and also, before I went sober, yes, I was smoking weed every weed every day, but for three years, um, and I've had periods all through my life where I've stopped completely, but for the three years before I stopped mm-hmm. smoking weed, I would only do hard drugs on very special occasions. And it would be like three or four times a mm-hmm, year, mm-hmm. and it would be like one line of Coke at a party. Well, even Coke wasn't that interesting, but like it would be, you know, some LSD. For a very special party. LSD? Yeah. Okay. Or, you know, it would be something very... It would be like three or four times a year. Yeah. And it would be like, oh, I'm at this music festival. Yeah. All my friends, you know. And it was... And so for me, hard drugs aren't... Like, are still not something that I have... That's yeah. not regular for me at all. Yeah. But... And now, drinking is really not regular. For, like, I really do feel like I'm... When I say I really do, I feel like I'm justifying it and it's too strong. But I feel like sobriety is the normal for me. And yeah. I struggle hanging out with people that are drinking, like I can see how their behavior is deteriorating and I yeah. lose interest yeah. after they're hitting their third beer and I'm just like, yeah. the quality of this chat is, is lessening. declining, yeah. Your, your, your um, emotions towards me are increasing and I'm slowly like uh, mm. emotionally disconnecting, actually. Oh yeah. That's, that's yeah. basically how it yeah. goes. Um, but this whole, okay, connecting this whole adults only thing and me saying that I would stop that I don't think I meant that I would stop the adults only thing because my goal with mm, goals a strong term for it, but I am attracted to like Nikki Glaser, for example. Yes. A lot of her jokes, like, you know, she's done several specials that are pretty much purely sex related yeah, jokes. Banging. And banging, exactly. Yeah. And and they're, you know, even like Ali Wong or, you know, yeah. a lot of female comics, we still there's a strong need for us to uh, normalize women talking and like sharing our experiences and the ridiculousness okay. of, of being a woman and okay. sex. Like there are still women who, um, like, did I tell, I'm not sure if I told you this recently, I'm not sure if I've talked about it on the podcast at all, but I, um, I did, I've got this joke about, uh, cleaning come off tits. Yes. Which you've seen. And, uh, I did this recently at a, I've not seen come on your tits. Oh, you I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen the, the joke. Unfortunately, uh, uh, just to make that clear. I, yeah, so I did this joke at this, um, at this venue that often has, like, the producers attract a certain crowd and they're not really a feminine, like, politically feminist, you know, pushing crowd. Like, they're, you know. They're Interesting. Like, and so I did this material oh. and one of the women afterwards, like, I could feel that, like, a lot of the women were not with me. Mm-hmm. There were pockets of the crowd that were there, but I could wasn't just that they weren't with me; it's that they were hating me during mm. my set. And you know, you know that when you oh yeah, yeah 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 you, know you it. feel it oh, oh my you god feel it. And I got off I got off stage and I was just like I'm not talking to anyone in mm. that audience like I yeah whatever. And uh, and then I came back upstairs after a bit, and um, this woman was leaving, and she went to like a few of the comedians. Oh great work! Oh great work! Yeah. And then she turned to me and she said, it "Must be so hard being a woman doing comedy." And I was like, mm. oh, wow, this is tough. And this then, tough. and then, what um, a bitch. Well, yeah, right. And then I was just like, oh, wow, like, 
sisterhood, baby. Like, 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 don't you realize that it's an art form and you just don't have to judge afterwards? Yeah. Just oh, sit, yeah. watch the show, like, and if you don't like it, don't laugh. Like, don't pity anybody. Yeah. yeah. And can you see that I'm having fun? Like, I was having fun, and yeah. I'm having fun, yeah. and that you think that I'm having a, having a hard time with it. Like, anyway, what was even worse is, um, is then uh, one of the other comedians told me that... Um, Straight after the show, this woman had come up to him and said, oh, that Anna, she always does such nasty jokes. Why does she talk about women like that? We're not all like that. Why does she have to paint us? Yeah. Women all like sluts. And it's like, dude, if you don't get cum on your tits, <laughs> you're lying. You're or, lying. or you're into women. And that's fine. And, as, she was not into. Yeah, she was like, not. And the, yeah, exactly. Either you're a lesbian, yeah. which is fine. But even then, it's like, if you, you know, if you swallow cum, if you get cum on your face, if you get cum on your yeah. tits, a woman talking about that makes other women feel like it's okay that they do it as well. It doesn't make you a slut. It's just part of the sex act, and there can be funny parts in it. Like men. Well, I don't. You know, I don't want women to be okay with that. I want them to feel guilty. <laughs> 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 no, but okay. I have two thoughts about it. Um, the first one is okay. I listen to Bangin, yeah, Nikki Glaser's Bangin, yeah. and it's purely about fucking. Yeah. It's all. It's like from mi minute one. Yeah. It's fuck, 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 yeah. and then the closing joke is fuck. It's yeah. all just fuck. It's all fuck. A lot of blowjobs. A lot of blow. That's what I tried. Fucking. I tried to rewatch it recently. I was just like, oh, she's moved so far beyond that point. I couldn't. I couldn't watch it because it was just like, oh, it's too old. It's, like yeah. she's be so much better now. And, and I think and. Uh, uh, I was surprised that I enjoyed the entirety mm -hmm. of the show, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. now there's two huge buts. You only have one huge yeah, but. Yeah. No, there's two huge buts. The first one is this dirty material is not timeless. No. Like all comedy, mm -hmm. comedy is very T timely how do you say it it's it's it exists in space and time yeah. mm -hmm. only for a few years mm -hmm. and then the jokes start to rot and society starts to change they can and some some jokes some live on jokes but, but like a, a lot, lot. Of, yeah. and stand-up sets particularly there's jokes yes. and like one-liners that can live on but jokes can often you know, yeah yeah most and of the time. and i feel like the whole nikki glazer um Raise like when she grew as a mm -hmm, comedian when mm -hmm. she when she up, broke coming up and when she when she broke yeah um, this was before the Me Too and feminism movement was mm. was like the was one of the main topics people talk about so she m maybe started it but she also played with a lot of taboos. That aren't that much of a taboo anymore. Agreed, that's, agreed. That's, but like Joan Rivers as well, like all the yeah, female oh yeah, comedians. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Really, yeah, it's yeah. Like Lisa Lampanelli Lisa and so on. Yeah. And so this, this is Truman. one thought. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the second thing is, and this is maybe more important, but very comedy nerdy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of very dirty, edgy comedians like Jimmy Carr, mm -hmm. Um, also, John Mulaney sometimes. Dude, Louis C.K. He like Louis. You know, you, Louis, yeah. Louis. He's got his, his dirty bits. Um, Anthony Jeselnik. I love Jeselnik. And like Jimmy Carr, Jeselnik, Mulaney, they have one thing in common. Also, Ali Wong. Mm -hmm. Is it Ally? Ally. 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 They have one thing in common. They're very cleanly dressed they have a very clean oh, ellie wong is clean she's pregnant that's the only reason why yeah. she looks clean. yeah she's wearing leopard print shorts oh she yeah shows but, her underwear she yeah, like but very but, but 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 imagine jimmy carr being not like sh freshly shaved mm, 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 mm. with a five o'clock shadow I, yeah. The jokes wouldn't work. The same with John Mulaney. Mm -hmm. They all wear the tuxedo. Yeah. They have perfect hair. Yeah. They're 
perfectly shaven. It's all clean. And, and I think it's this really is, important. Yeah. yeah, it's that's like this is like uh, the the gap between the material and the visual appearance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is you can see this is the person who that got his or her life in order that that knows how to behave. Yeah. And so on that has manners, but mm -hmm. now they break it. Every single line is breaking this. Yeah. And th I think this is a very important part of those jokes. Very important. And mm -hmm. sometimes when a comedian who has a lot of tattoos maybe, mm -hmm. or is not um, um, particularly clean or well-dressed, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. just like Kyle Kinane or Bert Kreischer, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they do this material, mm -hmm. it's a very different impact. And it's, it's yeah, 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 I agree. When I uh, dress and up I'm to sure, shows, And, and Nikki yeah, yeah. Glaser as well, she's always yeah, yeah, perfectly yeah, yeah. dressed. And I, Perfect. I agree. We are looking at comedy specials that have been filmed, obviously, yes. and you know, these are people who are, like, I think when you're at the point where you're performing, like when you do showcases, like I dress up for showcases. Oh yeah, you do. Yeah, no, I dress up. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and I think it's really important to have that contrast of mm -hmm. you know the appearance with the material. Uh, it'll, you know, also you're you're taking effort and blah blah blah. But there was also another person I was thinking of uh, in that uh, list of people um, that you reminded me of. Who was it? Uh, shit. A dirty comedian. A dirty or? comedian who. Um, oh damn it! I I bookmarked it in my head and now it's disappeared. Um, is this person also very clean, nicely no, dressed? They, ah, that's right. No, she's not that cleanly, nicely mm -hmm. dressed. She dresses more in her... Sarah Silverman. Okay, yeah. Yeah, she dresses more with her... But they all dress with personality. Like, I think Nikki Glaser, for example, she dresses like a girl who's... A woman who's going mm -hmm. to a club who wants to pick up, right? Yeah. And Ali Wong as well. Like, yeah. they're, they're dressing... It's not necessarily clean and conservative. It's just... Nicely dressed. Nicely dressed. Mm. Also, Sarah Silverman usually is very nicely dressed, and mm, she's often wearing like 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 stockings with denim shorts. Oh yeah, that's very. You think that's nicely dressed? That's sexy and it's nice. It's sexy. Okay. It's okay. not classy hear, as in hear, like a okay. wedding gown, but yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. also, Sarah Silverman's fame mm. is long time gone. Yeah, yeah, long yeah. time gone. Yeah, it is. It was in the early two thousands. Yeah. She was very, very young, yeah. and she did a lot of pussy jokes. She made so she was in her early 30s, impact. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was in her early 30s. Yeah. yeah. She was at SNL when she was 21. Yeah. Did not have a single joke no. on air. She didn't. And then deep dived for a couple of years, yeah. disappeared. And then in her late 20s, she really broke. And, um, and she was very... This was a this was a different time. This was really a different mm -hmm, time. Twenty mm -hmm. years ago. Oh uh, yeah, when, no. But I remember watching her show um, back in like 2010. No, what was the show called? It was like the Sarah, Sarah Silverman, Silverman show. show. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe not 20, but 15 years. Yeah, yeah. This was it's the same time as Louis Louis pre, series. Pre social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pre social yeah. media. Facebook came like. In 27, 28, uh, 28, 2007, seven, 2008, seven. Yeah. this was when was Facebook really grew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And nobody was on any other platform. Oh, there were no other platforms. Yeah. Um, okay, but what I wanted to round, on, round out on, round off on, uh, was the thing of me giving up the, I, I have no intention of giving up my sexually focused material. Yeah. But I do think it will naturally develop and change. But the reason why I have the, all, I brand it like that is to set expectations of audiences because a lot of my material does go in that direction yeah. and I want to feel comfortable that I go yeah. in that direction and yeah. my mind will often go to really dark stuff yeah yeah it's you dark. also talk about suicide I talk about death I talk yeah. about you know um, pedophilia you know yeah. like I talk about I talk about these things and so I think they're really dark topics and I want mm -hmm. yeah I want audiences to be psychologically prepared mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for that yeah and I want to keep being able to write in that direction but I do want I don't know like I had a set recently at Cosmic and the audience really pulled back it was a mm -hmm. showcase and they mm -hmm. really pulled back at um, at my dark stuff I only okay. did two dark jokes and okay. they really pulled back and uh, yeah, I I got away. From, I walked away from that devastated. 
Only two one-liners didn't work, but they didn't work to such a point where I was just like, oh my God, I want to change my writing. Well, <sighs> you can change your writing. And maybe this is a... But I feel like that's me trying to please not my audience. I have an audience. I have people who like my stuff. And I like but my stuff. But you don't have fans. Huh? You don't have fans. I and do you have are, fans. Well, but not as in like you can tour nationally. I can't tour internationally but, or nationally. But, no. But I do have fans and I do have people that remember me and come to my shows yeah, for, for yeah. me. Yeah, because you're a very good performer. Thank you. You're a very good performer. But you are, just like me, very early into your career. Yes. We started doing stand-up very late in our lives. Yes, we did. And um, what, what I do now is I experiment a lot with very different material. Like I go up and do just seven minutes of one-liners. Mm -hmm. I talk about um, eating with my family. I mm -hmm. talk about sleep. I talk about future ideas and construct a, mm -hmm. another reality. Mm -hmm. Just very different material. Mm -hmm. Like the one is like trying to be like Stephen Wright. The other one is trying mm -hmm. to be like Louis. The other one is trying to be like mm -hmm. Gary Gullman, whatever. And, and I feel this, that this is very freeing mm -hmm. to, to not limit yourself yeah. and, and, I agree. And, and, and go other ways. And that's why I love that you did a German show. Because the German audience is very different. Mm -hmm. They're not expats. They are mm -hmm. not on vacation. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like they are in a special place. Mm -hmm. Because every English audience is like, oh, this is special now. Mm -hmm. And they're just regular people who go to work. Mm -hmm. and, and a very different audience. Mm -hmm. And I think this could be beneficial for your material as well. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that your material sucks, but it, it, I mean, a different audience always tells you something different yeah. about your material. Yeah, and what's interesting, the, the, yeah, the material that I thought would work less with the German audience uh, worked absolutely, and the material that I <laughs> <laughs> thought should work did not work. Nice. Um, nice. Only, only one joke that didn't work, and I was just like, ah, oh. very much delivery could have been a big issue in yeah. that, but whatever. But yes, finally did my first German show. Thank you. And it was Thanks great. That's it was very great. generous. That's very yeah. generous. But I've also been watching some, I've got to wrap up soon. I've also been watching um, some Australian comedians, and there's certain elements of the Australian uh, humor that I want to reconnect with. And, uh, mm -hmm. and like, for example, yesterday I tried out some new material and I, and I really sort of leaned, lent into my Australian self. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and there's like a sort of a, a, a happy, dumb, optimistic dryness to the Australian All humor. Right. And yeah. so I was kind of leaning. And it's, it's quite hard for a, a, a female comic to be dry. Like often we need to like for saying shit we need to be like happy about it if it's yeah. like really fucked up or whatever yeah and so being a dry female comic is a bit harder i think but yeah i was experimenting with that and the thing is though with the content like any material i write i will write what speaks to me and what i think is funny and so putting myself in different environments gives me different material so i've got mm. a lot of material on children because i work with kids and so that mm. stands in great contrast to like the sex stuff and then my dating life and then you know as i get like a eventually get like a, a dog and then maybe even a long-term relationship then that's going to inform my material mm -hmm. but my material is a hundred percent just a reflection on what i'm living and what i'm yeah. thinking and feeling yeah great so it's like, great great and i do like the exercise of just trying to write totally different stuff but um i need to be motivated to do, like it needs to yeah it's got to be like a project or yeah you know but otherwise i'm motivated to write stuff that hits me emotionally i'm very i'm very uh excited about your new material and also about your german sets yes very, i very very really I'm, looking forward to it i'm gonna do more german uh once my 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 work starts again next uh okay. tomorrow and just by working i'm talking german more and it's just a yeah. I, hadn't, I hadn't spoken german yeah. regularly for seven weeks when i did that set i mean this is um maybe not to make this podcast too long but a common problem I see with um, English speaking comedians is that they do some German sets mm. and they kind of work mm. because they're good comedians and mm. their material is okay and the language is meh, meh, meh. Mm. But the next step to get booked on shows mm. and to get jobs is to really speak the language. Yes. And it's so hard. Totally. I imagine it being, I can only imagine, but. 
I imagine it being so hard to live in Berlin mm. as an English native speaker mm. and trying to learn German mm. because everybody speaks English. Or everyone There jumps to English as soon as you try jumps speaking German. To <laughs> and yeah, and the only people I know who like really hone their German skills mm. are people who read, write, and German and force other people to talk yeah. German to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we could also speak I, German. And I want to spend more time speaking German with you. Yeah. Absolutely. And once I'm back working and I do, I am reading a German book. It's nice. It's a Great. Fremde by Albert Great. Camus. Yeah. So, you know, nice light stuff, a bit of existentialism. Um, but, you know, the plan is to do, is to get back into speaking German more regularly yeah. and then, as of this week. And then, yeah. Nice. I need to be more confident. Very exciting. Normally. Very exciting. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, let's wrap this up. I think right. um, we were kind of like comedy nerding out, but yeah. like that was very fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, any any last anything? Well, last anything. Um, last. I don't. Last. I don't have a podcast at the moment on my own, mm -hmm. um, but I do host uh, a lot of shows. Yeah. So if you're in Berlin and you want to see a German show. Come to the Wall Comedy Club on Sundays. Which is where we're recording, by the way. We're Thanks recording. to Foster Yao. It's a very good club, very nice. I do a show every Sunday. It's mm -hmm. called Wilde Ponies, stand up and improvise stand up. And every Tuesday at Cassiopeia, uh, that's also in Friedrichshain, uh, Gute Mische, that's uh, also a showcase comedy show. Mm -hmm. right. And you do Zeus, Zeus stuff as well? Yeah, but it's not on a regular basis. Okay, all right. Yeah. At Zeus Fagestum. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. Thanks, Hans. Thank you. Uh, that's thanks for been, having me. Yeah, always a pleasure. Uh, that has been Adults Only Comedy Berlin, and see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.